And we're live. Welcome everyone to the first basics live stream cook along event in well over a year's time. We're here to celebrate the new basics with Babish cookbook. I'm your host, an anonymous voice, and I'm here to introduce Andrew Ray, aka Babish. And fun, yeah, <laughs> what's up, guys? Yeah, let's go wide for for the. Do you mind going wide so I can? Hello, folks. Did you, uh, Steve? Did you pull focus for me on this one? Thank you. Hey, guys. Welcome to the first live stream we've done in many, many moons. What's going on? Huge delay. Huge delay. That's not ideal. We just went on stream. I saw the frog. Well, you know, I mean, there's a delay for you. That yeah, yeah, no, it's supposed oh, to be a delay. Yeah, 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 you know, but I thought you were saying people were saying this. No, 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 no. I'm saying. Hey, guys. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we literally just we found the piece of gear that we needed nine minutes ago. <laughs> And we were troubleshooting it, and I think we just got it out the door. If there's any issues with the audio, let us know. If there's any issues with picture, let us know. Nico's given us the big thumbs up. People seem to like it. And as you can see, we weren't prepared because I'm just about to iron my apron. So it seems like a fitting way to start things off. <laughs> Welcome back to the kitchen. It's been a long time. Uh, we're going to be cooking a couple things from the new book today. Come on. We're going to be cooking a couple of things from the new book today. We're going to be doing a uh, butter basted ribeye and some blender mac and cheese. We're going to be doing some Q&A. We're going to be doing um, uh, just those two things, really. But we're your friends for the next two-ish hours. Um, while I'm ironing, should, are there any interesting, uh, is there any interesting discourse happening in the discourse of the discourse of the chat? Nobody's watching, I think. Uh, 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 oh, the mic's a little quiet? Okay, yeah, you can crank the levels in OBS. You guys are, as usual, you guys are part of our troubleshooting process, and we surely appreciate it. Uh, you'd think we'd have this down to a science by now, but it's been a long time. We're, we're dusting off the cobwebs. So, what's going on with you guys? <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed, but today was the, pre the premiere of a new cookbook, my new cookbook, Basics with Babish. This guy just hit shelves and Amazon delivery boxes today. And Barnes & Noble uh, delivery uh, boxes because they've been a great partner. <laughs> so shout out Barnes & Noble. And uh, this guy just came out today. It's available for your purchase and enjoyment. It's a solid half inch thicker than the last book, if that means anything. Just pound for pound, like you're getting more book per dollar with this one. But uh, it's also full of a ton of, you know, tips and tricks. We've got a do's and don'ts, a glossary. If you've seen any of my basics episodes in the last few months, you've definitely heard that 10 times before, so I won't, I won't beat it over your head. But today we're just going to be making some of the simpler recipes because live streams tend to get a little hectic, so I'm not trying to do anything too crazy first time back. But I really appreciate you guys coming through and, um, and uh, uh, hanging out with us. I got uh, most of the crew here. We got Steve, we got Kendall, we got Sawyer and we got Nico. Is Alvin joining us at any point? I don't think so. Alvin's here in spirit. He's joining us for dinner. What's up? We're all the way up on OBS. You might need to do that manually on the mic. Okay, I have to manually adjust my pack, folks. <laughs> 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 One moment. How do I do that? Ma Steve's going to come in and manually adjust my pack. Anybody who hasn't met Steve yet, he is the genius behind the camera of Football Fusion and anime with Alvin, and he is far and away our tallest employee, <laughs> and most Floridian. Shout out. Shout out. Tampa, right? Tampa. Tampa. Never been. I hear it's beautiful this time of year, yeah. and every time of year, because yeah. it's Florida. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> oh, oh, he's got it. Who's, who didn't silence their cellular phone? That's policy. Was it me? A monster? All right, Andrew, give me a little count. Wasn't me. A, B, C, that's not counting. One, two, three, four, five. Does that do anything? Can't you guys just turn your volume up? I'm kidding. I know it's us. I'm just kidding. You lost him completely? Well, that's not in your ear. There you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> it wasn't on your ear. No, 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 okay. All right. All right. I see that there it goes. There's a solid level. Okay. All right, we're getting it, we're folks. On a delay, so I don't know if this is <laughs> <laughs> it's broken, 
We got a solid 15 second delay, so we're, we're catching better. up, folks. That's better. Much better. We're right, hearing we're much gonna, betters. That's my it. favorite review. You fixed it. <laughs> 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 and frankly, folks, that's what this cookbook is all about. It's about making mistakes, like the ones we're making right now, live. <laughs> And uh, it's about, you know, just try not beating up on yourself so much for, um, for mistakes and trying to use them as learning experiences. We good? Cool? All right. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop paying attention to the, to, to the technical specifications. Um, there we go. Almost done ap aproning my iron. And uh, we'll get started here. So new books out today. I hope you guys, if you pre-ordered a copy, I hope you've received it. And that you enjoy it. Sorry, that was kind of noisy. Is it, is it, did it fall in? Oh, it's underneath the apron. That's the problem. We'll fix this. We'll get it. We'll get it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody just shield your ears for a moment. That's got to be loud and annoying. My bad. I'm just going to button this up. Is this, am I making a lot of awful noise right now, Sawyer? It's a much better. It was just one quick okay, I'm just going to do that. All right. How's that? Does it look silly? Steve, how do I look? I think you look yeah? Yeah, honestly. Okay, thanks, man. <laughs> Steve thinks he, I look great if you couldn't hear him. Just want to make sure everybody knows that. Um, uh, should I be addressing this camera? Right, Is this right. my? Okay, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Okay, switch, I'll do this. Okay, all right. Yeah, give me a wave. So, don't need this anymore. <laughs> so, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to unplug this iron, and we're going to get started. Let's pretend that the stream just started because now the audio is good. Let's see, I'm gonna walk in again. Hello and welcome. If you're just joining us, it's because we just started. Nothing happened before this. Welcome to the first Basics with Babish live stream in well over a year's time. Yada, yada, yada. We're here today to celebrate the new Basics with Babish cookbook. I'm super proud of this. Kendall did a huge amount of work in making sure that this was a tome of technical knowledge and uh, we worked together to workshop old recipes from basics, stuff from years ago. In fact, it's outlined in the very first few pages. During the introduction, I started writing this book when I saw this. Can, can we get a close-up of that? These, these YouTube thumbnails? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. The, 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 both of them. The, can we one, two shot? Uh -huh. There we go. There we go. So. Uh, I saw these thumbnails when I searched for Babish Pizza, as I do every night before bed, and uh, I, I saw the huge change that had taken place. Like the first episode of Basics, I don't, everything's backwards, sorry. The first episode of Basics, I really didn't know what I was doing, if you can't tell. I was trying to make a Neapolitan style pie in a home oven, which is just nigh on impossible. And then, much more recently, we put out the Pizza Dough episode. And I saw the huge change that had taken place in technique. And it was just really exciting that years of public mistakes, <laughs> public and private, had paid off. And here are the tangible, tasteable results. So these, that's what, <laughs> that's what this whole book is about, is basically just failing until you figure it out. And forgetting the word fail. Forget, forget to use the word fail. That's not the right one. Um, so... We're not making pizza tonight, but that's why pizza's on the cover, because it is kind of just part of the story and the lore of this book. I'm going to be answering questions about the book, about cooking, about love and life. And I'm going to be making a steak and some macaroni and cheese. Should we get started? I got my apron on. It looks like I'm ready to do a cooking show. I mean, by any metric, this looks... It, it, the, the, all the stuff's here. I'm here. Let's do it. So, uh, should we do a couple, a couple cues before... Does anybody have eyes on cues for me? All right, we got a super chat. All uh, I should mention that all proceeds from super chats tonight are going to No Kid Hungry, so please uh, ask away. It'll get your question in front of us faster, and the money's going to a good cause. Nico, what's the first super chat? What do you think is the best recipe you ever made? What do I think is the best recipe I ever made? Surely, due to its originality, um, I think the uh, really orangey orange chicken, uh, which I'm going to try to flip directly to, but to no avail and see if I'm even going in the right direction. I'm in the chicken chapter, but I'm running out of pages. Uh oh, I went the wrong direction. We got this. So it's actually adapted from, there it is. It's actually adapted from um, uh, the Rick and Morty episode. Uh, really orangey orange chicken. So they make the joke that uh, uh, the, the chicken from Panda Express is sugar chicken. 
um, which it really is. There's a lot of sugar in any item from Panda Express. Um, and we wanted to take that literally and also use it as a tool. So we utilized an oleosaccharum. Oleosaccharum is uh, basically normally used in cocktails. It's basically a, um, a, uh, a citrus oil sh sugar extract. So you pack uh, citrus peel in sugar, let it sit overnight or a couple days, and it's going to draw all these citrus oils out of the peels and make this deeply orangey flavored uh, syrup that you'd normally put to good use in a lovely cocktail. But in this case, we used it because you need a lot of sugar in the sauce, it was an excellent source of both sugar and orange flavor. And even though this was made for a binging, I love it so much that I decided to put it in this book, not only because it came out after the last book, so it's not in the last book, it had to go somewhere. And I'm just, it, it, it's one of the few recipes that I truly think is, is a genuine like innovation. The most of the innovation about this book is the fact that it's honest and that it's, it's about making mistakes and having fun. But in terms of recipes, you know, I didn't invent chicken parm. I just have my favorite way of doing it. The really orangey orange chicken is like, that's a new, that's a new idea, I think. I don't know if oleosaccharum has been put to use in that way. I'm not sure, but I like to think that that's a genuine innovation that we brought to the table. Definitely one of my favorite recipes. Have we got any more? Hit yes. me. We're cooking with CJ. What was the hardest part about writing this book? And what was the best part about writing this book? So, Cooking with CJ, thank you for your question. The hardest part and the best part about writing this book. The hardest part was that last year was a really tough year. Uh, my relationship ended. Um, I, uh, I'm going over here. <laughs> what are you doing, Barbara Walters thing here? Yeah, sensitive, yeah. yeah. Uh, my, you know, last year was a really tough year. I, I, um, I uh, 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 my relationship ended and uh, you know, I was amidst writing the cookbook. I had a major mental spin out and you guys might have noticed the spring of last year I took a month off the channel that was to go back, you know, just take some space and figure myself out. And while I was gone, these guys picked up the slack and made a ton of content and just kept the channel afloat. So I'm so grateful to everybody in this room for so many reasons, but that's just one of them. And uh, that was definitely the hardest part was that 2022 was an extremely difficult year and that was when I wrote the lion's share of the book. And as a result, I ended up going back and rewriting a lot of stuff because I wasn't happy with where I was mentally when I, when I had written it. Um, so that was really, really tricky. And uh, it's still tough to go back and read some stuff sometimes because I have some attachments to it. The best part of writing this book was undoubtedly the photo shoot. Uh, photo shoot was a absolute marathon. It was 11 days. And we, for anybody who's seen the uh, Architectural Digest tour of my house, there's three full kitchens basically. There's the uh, Studio B down in the sub-basement, there's this kitchen, and then there's my kitchen upstairs. And we put all three to work in a sort of assembly line. All the heavy prep and uh, you know just mise en place and everything was getting done downstairs. Then it was brought up here for it to be finished and cooked. And then it was brought upstairs to be plated and styled. And then it was photographed in my living room where Evan Sung, uh, our incredible photographer, grabbed all the delicious mouth-watering imagery. And uh, then um, uh, the best part was that all the food that you see in the book was 100% edible. There's no motor oil syrup. There's no mayonnaise ice cream. It was all real food that we all ate. I, my, I went and got my cholesterol tested and it like j jumped. It's, there was a spike in my cholesterol uh, the week after that, that shoot. So it's just actual physical evidence of how much food was eaten and how good it was. Um, all the leftovers were taken home by the staff of 10 some odd people that we had in here. It was a really amazing experience and I think it shows in the photography. We had a lot of fun and we made a lot of really good food. What, what else we got? Oh, that's our fly killer, 5,000. There's a, <laughs> there's a, we have a zapper in the other room and every time we hear that crack of joy we, we, we celebrate because it killed yet another pest living in my house. What's up? Um, <clears throat> Shadow Master, sorry for not knowing what we just had. Uh, why not make food from foreign films uh, during the actor's strike? That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> um, I mean, most major properties we uh, are still connected to major studios. I'm over here now. <laughs> 
I can I should stop saying that and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, most I mean most major properties where at least people you know where there's food that that, that people want to see recreated they're still connected to a major studio. Um, there's definitely stuff that I could do. One one that uh, people repeatedly bring to my attention is Eat Drink Man Woman. The opening sequence, the incredible mouth watering sequence of this guy preparing this feast. And the reason I haven't done that is because it looks really super duper hard. Uh, like that guy has been doing that his entire life and it shows. It's a mastery of craft. And I have no idea what he's doing. And it looks super hard. And uh, so I, I just haven't mustered up the courage to do that yet. I'm really hoping that the strike ends. I mean, we all hope that the strike, the strike ends soon. Um, but there's also definitely other options. There's foreign films, there's books, there's just those two things. Uh, and, and older films. We're hoping to do some stuff from older films from studios that don't even exist anymore. So how could it possibly be studio production, uh, 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 promotion? Uh, so we'll definitely look into that because I'm dying to get back my teeth back into binging. It's been a long time. I know you guys miss it, I miss it. What else we got? Anybody else? What was the hardest food to make from cartoon food ideas? Oh my god. I mean, probably the Pretty Patties. Pretty Patties was a challenge. Was that the hardest? Like, oh, you know what? For Kung Fu Panda uh, noodles. Uh, what, what were you going to say? Oh. Oh, the tortilla. That's not a cartoon. That's, that's a. <laughs> Would you guys call Despicable Me a cartoon? Despicable Me 2? Yes. yes. But it's. <laughs> it depends what you mean by cartoon. Animation, or do you mean the, the genre of Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Despicable Me Too. Uh, I guess that was that was very challenging, but and I was more challenging for you because you did the recipe testing, which I really appreciated. I, I you figured out the formulation for the uh, masa mixture that we ended up using for the hat, so you 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 had to do a lot more work than on that one than I did. Um, but the hardest one that I had to do by far was the uh, uh, I was saying Kung Fu Panda which is also a CG movie, and I was like, that's a cartoon! <sighs> um, but the, the, the hand-pulled noodles from Kung Fu Panda was a real and actual challenge. Uh, physical strength, mental acuity, and, emo and spiritual enlightenedness, uh, all three at once. It was, it was a trifecta of horrors, just because it took a whole weekend to work up enough gluten to overdevelop the gluten in that dough so that it could be stretched like bubble gum. Uh, it, 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 it people who have been training for their entire lives to do it, uh, you know, they can, they can do what, what took me a whole weekend, they can do in five minutes. And they got the, this taffy-like dough, but it took me forever. Uh, I, I wanted to give up so many times, and I, I persevered, uh, but uh, uh, that was definitely the hardest. What else we got? Is that all the Super Chats? No. No, what, you have a yeah, fun question? What would you think about making a recipe for roasted goose for Christmas, and how, how would you put a recipe for that together? I'll tell you, I would make the Hungarian goose from season eight of Frasier. What? And need I remind you that I am roasting an Hungarian goose? <laughs> he, his voice breaks, that's why I did it. I'm not, my voice isn't changing, I promise. Um, I, uh, uh, so, I've never made goose before. <laughs> So it would start with a Google search. Uh, I, I, I assume that it's made very similarly to turkey as I understand there's a higher fat content. So many, what? Mess. Makes a huge mess? Oh, okay, there, apparently there's so much fat, say, so saith Kendall, that, uh, that it just makes a mess of your oven because of all the splattering and splattering. And uh, uh, that doesn't sound so great, but some really fatty goose does sound nice. So. Maybe once, uh, once the strike's over and we can, we can promo things again, especially to celebrate the return of Frasier, we could do the Hungarian Goose, uh, which I believe was his Christmas meal or Thanksgiving meal. I don't know why I'm looking at you. Have you ever seen an episode of Frasier? Not in my life. What are we doing? Well, that is my failing. Um, speaking of which, this is also, this might be a celebration of the cookbook, but it is also an open forum for the discussion of, is the new Frasier series good? That's what we're really here to figure out. Leave a comment. I want to hear your hot takes. Here's my hot take. Frasier's the only good part of the new Frasier. 
he, he's, he's still very funny. It's the role he was born to play, but uh, his son, they've disregarded his, Freddy's character entirely, and he is, a, he is a Martin replacement. He's an everyman kind of dude. He's a fireman, obviously. It's just like, we need a new Martin. Let's make it Freddy. And we need a new Niles, obviously. Let's make it Niles' son. Who, who just is, is like kind of, anyway, it's, <laughs> this is what you came here for. Uh, uh, it, it, I'm, 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 in, I'm watching it, I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely not, it doesn't have the magic of the original series for me personally. That's just me not trying to, is, is everybody lighting me up right now? Do people hate what I'm saying? They're rewatchers. You got a lot of rewatchers. All right. Or people who are watching the original for the first time because of, you are proselytizing. That is the best. Oh, because my proselytizing? Yeah. Okay, well, I was going to say, people. even if just for the new series coming out, if you're watching the new, the, the, the old, the old uh, Frasier, then, you know, more power to you and more power in the new series because that's the single greatest sitcom in television history. I'm going to say that. It is the most award-winningest sitcom in television history. I'm going to say that unfoundedly with some confidence. No, two yeah, and a half imagine. men? Okay, no, no, no. I can't. No, 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 no. no but that's the most popular. Okay, okay. Are you are you thinking of Big Bang Big Thing? Bang. Oh, no, no, okay. these are the most popular. They're, they're not they're not good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I do know that it won the most Emmys of any comedy programming. Oh, definitely in its time. I just yeah, no, yeah, it, it won like were, 38 Emmys. Yeah, that's what it was. Veep yeah. wasn't on the air long enough to win 38 sure. Emmys. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, no, could you look up the most award winningest American sitcom of all time? Veep is great. Veep is great. Veep's amazing. I love that. Like, I'm re watching Veep right now because it is so dense with humor that you, you miss jokes because you're laughing at the last joke. Like, that's how many rapid fire jokes there are. Like, you blink or you cough and you miss it. What's up? Up, uh, oh, yep, yep, yep. 37. I was one off. And Simpsons trailing with 35, that follows. I'm doing a big Simpsons rewatch right now, and that show's really very funny. Uh, then Cheers, okay. I mean, you know, Frasier Origins, as I like to call it. Uh, it's like Wolverine Origins, it's Frasier Origins. Um, then RuPaul's Drag Race, and then... I wouldn't call it a sitcom. That's not a sitcom. Is that a sitcom? I wouldn't call it a sitcom, it's reality TV. No, these are just 10 TV shows with the most Emmy Awards. This is just all TV shows. Yeah. It isn't the most, is it the, the most, most award winningest? Whoa. Sorry, this just turned into Fraser Forum. I warned you. <laughs> Maybe we should cook. <laughs> hey, you know what? Very least, let me start dry brining the steak. Can I get the steak? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So, anyway, if you guys have questions pertaining to Fraser <laughs> or food or literally anything else, I should, if you guys have questions, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, yeah, let's, 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 hear, let's hear some questions. We have some super chats. And for those of you who are, for those of you who are just joining us uh, and didn't hear, all the super chat, all the proceeds from the super chats are going to No Kid Hungry. They're going to a good cause. So super chat away, so we can get some, so we can hear your questions. Hit me. Um, uh, okay. Name your dream restaurant. My dream re restaurant, the Babbery. The, uh, the Babish Bagel Bus Boiler. The boil, the boil by Babish. It's a, it's a crab cake, or it's a crab, Maryland crab bagel brewery concept. <laughs> but, yeah, no, so the, the, uh, the Babbery is what we were genuinely going to call the brewery that we intended to open in Brooklyn before COVID hit. Uh, still would love to do that. Still would love to bring the Automat back to New York, as Nico informed me last night. Apparently it's already being done, so I'm too late to the punch, but... He just went like this, so that means we're still doing it. All right, uh, this looks like it's pretty hot. Does this look blown out in the stream? It looks worse than that. Really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it looks worse than that, then it does not that. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, just real quick before we get into the next question, um, I'm just going to lightly season my meats with kosher salt. What else? And... Uh, I'm also going to just use one hand to sprinkle the salt because I'm touching meat with the other hand. And um, I know I just switched hands, but I hadn't touched the meat yet, okay? Just, just to get, give me a break. Um, we have, 
just kosher salt right now. You could do pepper, but a lot of people say that pepper uh, burns when you, you know, sear and, and it creates some bitter acrid flavors. But uh, I mean, it's also a very classic flavor. I know, I know it's not ideal, but it's kind of like what you get from your hometown steakhouse when you're growing up. It's just that, that nice carbonized pepper flavor. Uh, but I'm just going to go salt. And then uh, ideally, you'd want to let this sit in the fridge overnight uh, for 24 hours just to allow the salt to be absorbed. And then sort of, how does it work? It's like it draws moisture out and then the moisture is reabsorbed. Kenji Lopez Alt, my, the, the source of all my cooking knowledge apart from mistakes, uh, did a whole article on what happens when you dry brine beef. So got the beef dry brining. If you can't do it overnight, then let it sit at room temp for at least 30, 45 minutes, ideally hour. That's both gonna help it sort of come to room temperature a little bit. Again, that's, that's contested, but uh, it's, it's, it's just going to Im improve moisture retention and flavor. So this guy is gonna sit until we're ready to cook it. I'm also just going to wash my hands quick because we're on camera. And if I were just alone, I'd be licking my fingers clean right now. But gotta be food safe. So there we go. We have a beautiful ribeye. We have a bunch of steak recipes. Where's towels anywhere? Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Just a pile of towels. Are these the best, by the way? These cafe towels. I have like 50 of them because they're cheap. They they stand up to anything. They're great. Get these cafe towels. We make these. No, we don't. Don't get these cafe towels. Um, <laughs> But uh, 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 next, let's do another question while, while that steak's brining before we get into the mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I meet you in Chicago? Yes, you can. There is an event in Chicago uh, on which date? That's um, day after tomorrow? Is it a Thursday. Thursday? It's Thursday. It's this Thursday, the 26th. Uh, uh, going to be there. Uh, that's a stage performance, right? So that's you and me chopping it up on stage, me and Sawyer having a conversation, Q&A with you guys, and then a meet and greet signing pictures, the works afterwards. So come check me out in Evanston. Uh, I believe it's at the high school in Evanston. Um, our friend from childhood is going to be there, Doug. If Doug's watching, shout out. We'll see you in Evanston. And uh, what was the name of the person who just asked that? I think it was Dan. You think it was Dan? Dan? <laughs> We'll see you in Chicago. And I'm, am I going to be getting pizza? Yeah. You bet your ass I am. Oh, a P I got to go to Pequod's. I got to try Pequod's. Because I, I, I got the Pequod's off Gold Belly, and it's probably just lost in translation, translation because it was frozen. But I wasn't crazy about, about the, the, the one I got off Gold Belly. But how could it possibly compare to the original? It's a frozen brick that's shipped halfway across the country. So I'm going to go to Pequod's and get the real thing. So I'll see you at Pequod's on the 26th right after a brief fireside chat with Babish. Oh, coffee after 5 p.m. I must be out of my mind. I'm 36, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be up until the day after tomorrow. Pissing the whole time. <laughs> what have, what, next question, please. Uh, long time follower, first time super chatter. Is the bed and br breakfast still happening? See you in Philly. See you in Philly. Whose name? Igioma the Plant Mama. Egioma the Plant Mama, I'll see you in Philly. And yes, the Ben Babish is still very much happening. We just got some fresh pictures from the site. All that's missing really is siding and appliances and electricity, which I understand is important in houses. Uh, <laughs> we're just waiting for the permits to run the electrical line, but the house is literally on the five yard line. It's so close to being done. Radiant heat flooring wood-burning stove in the middle of the panoramic windows facing the majestic Delaware River. Bald eagles nesting on the property, literally. I mean that. There are bald eagles that nest on the property. There's a black bear that was spotted there. You're perfectly safe in the, in the cabin. Just don't leave the cabin. <laughs> and uh, no, there's wonderful wildlife there. There's it's right near Narrowsburg, New York, which is, has an incredible downtown. There's a wonderful gourmet market. There's great restaurants there, the Heron. Um, there's, the, 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 there's lovely antique shops and everything. It's a really, really cool place. I'm very excited to open up to reservations as soon as it's ready to go. Like We just need to put those last three elements in and then decorate it, and that's it. So it's going to be a two-bed, two-bath, and it's going to have a secret component. 
that you're going to have to stay there to find out just what the hell it is. But it's fun. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a secret theater, okay? So there's this part of the structure that looks like it's just mechanicals or just, you know, the, where we keep the bodies or whatever. But there's like, I, I'm not going to describe it to you, but it's, it's, this, it's this secret room that opens up. And inside, this is my dream. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this fixed up, but I want to have a projector and a movies and surround sound in there, but also movies, TV shows, and video games in their original formats. So an N64 with all the, your favorite games, a Super Nintendo with all your favorite games, Seinfeld on VHS, d d uh, uh, other shows that I'm not, House on DVD. <laughs> Thanks, Nico, for rewatching House, so it was top of mind. Um, Nico loves House. And, uh, and, and um, uh, what else? Uh, Highlander on Laserdisc, I don't know. And uh, Alanis Morissette on CD. An Alanis Morissette on compact disc, the way it was meant to be heard. So, uh, we're, yeah, we're going to have some really fun tricks and surprises there, but we're also going to have some a la carte options for foodies. So, like, we're going to have the full suite of cookware out there, sharp knives. It's going to be the only vacation rental in the world with a sharp knife in it. <laughs> like, every place I've ever stayed has knives that have been through the dishwasher more times than my heart. I can't think of anything funny to say about dishwashers. The, 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 but the, there's never good tools in a, in a vacation rental and we're very excited to make a place that is specifically designed to go and cook or have heat and eat meals ready in the, in the fridge if you just want something easier. It's all up to you. So that's going to be coming uh, online. The uh, reservations will become available probably very early next year. We just need electricity. But it's going to be really, really fun. And I look forward to, we're going to be doing some like giveaways and stuff. Maybe I'll come out there and, and stay with you in your bed with you to, and read you stories before you sleep, tuck you in. It's, it's going to be a, a giveaway. Uh, what else we got? Julia Lacey asks, every pub I went to in the UK has the same pureed veg soup, not pea necessarily. Do you have a recipe? No. Uh, <laughs> Julie uh, asks if I have a recipe for the vegetable puree soup that she's had in every pub in the UK, and I've never had that. <laughs> and I don't have a recipe for it, I'm sorry. But that sounds really good, especially now that it's getting colder out. I'm going to be seeking that out the next time I'm in the UK, uh, which I don't know when that's going to be. I would love to go back. I haven't been since high school, this guy, when, when, when I had a lot more hair on my head. Yeah, so next question. The question is from Brian Klaus. I know flipping an Uncle Buck-sized pancake is hard to top, but will we ever see another Dan Souza collab? Brian Klaus asks if we're ever going to see a Dan Souza, another Dan Souza collab, and the answer to that is yes, absolutely. I'm so happy for Dan Souza. He is the editor-in-chief over at America's Test, over at Cook's Illustrated now, and uh, well-deserved. He is like one of the shining personalities and uh, uh, incredible skill set and, and, and amount of knowledge, and such a nice guy, the nicest guy on the planet. I had so much fun uh, shooting with him. I doubt, yes, that we're going to be able to involve advanced robotics, because that was kind of a heavy lift for, for, for them, uh, but uh, uh, definitely maybe bagels again or something, something way easier than a robotic pancake flipper. But um, I'm very excited to work with Dan again. We'll definitely see him again soon. What else we got? This one says, from Cat Lady. Cat Lady. Uh, my friends want to know the perfect bagel that is mastered at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then what drink pairs with it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Cat Lady wants to know the perfect bagel that is, bagel that is mastered at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the perfect pairing for it. Okay. I'm going to try to figure out what, that, what was meant by that. Uh, I guess the perfect uh, thing to have on a bagel, like, okay, whatever. I, <laughs> I love a really chewy, crispy bagel. Some people like bready, softer bagels. I love one that I have to gnaw on like a dog's chew toy. And I love to have not too much cream cheese in it. The, in New York City, especially, if you order a bagel with cream cheese, you're getting more cream cheese than you're getting bagel. The thing ends up being this thick. And you take a bite, and you're just like, where's the bagel in this mouthful of mush? 
And I don't like that. I like, I like a, you know, maybe like that much cream cheese on it. A respectable amount, but a, an accompaniment. The bagel should be the star of the show, unless it's a bagel sandwich. Oh, but then my favorite, okay, my favorite uh, breakfast sandwich is a bagel, probably a, a sesame seed bagel, nice and dense and chewy and crunchy and crispy uh, with uh, uh, ham, egg, and not cheese, but cream cheese. Pick your, pick your poison, uh, scallion cream cheese, sun-dried tomato cream cheese. It melts with the hot egg, it's so good. Bacon too, actually. Bacon's saltier and, and crunchier, it holds up better to the mush. Uh, give that a try. I know it sounds a little, a little different. It's not the usual American cheese or cheddar, but uh, it, 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 really, it really slaps. What's the best pairing with that? Like cocktail pairing, you think? Or like any drink? Well, the bagels are a morning food. I'm not going to condone, more, you know, you know uh, morning drinking. Uh, but you have Bloody Mary. Uh, <laughs> a, uh, uh, I mean, with that particular combo, God, the first thing that just came to mind was YooHoo. Is that insane? I don't even like YooHoo that much, but like that sounds like it would work for me. <laughs> I'm going to say YooHoo. I'm going to stick with that. All right, what's uh, what else we got? And then I'm going to start cooking soon. What's the next foodie trend going to be? I have no idea. What's the next foodie trend going to be? I don't know. The, 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 the foodie trends out there are so crazy that I, I can't even keep track of them. Like, like the advent of TikTok has made such a wild, untamed wilderness of, of tax and ideas and crazy combinations that I have no clue what the next trend is going to be. I hope, uh, I, it, in a broader sense, taking a step back, like how, um, you know, Chili Crisp became really popular in recent years. I think uh, Calabrian chilies are headed for the same uh, 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 popularity. Uh, <laughs> just because they have a very unique flavor, they have just the right amount of heat, and they're starting to become available in like every grocery store. So they seem to be having a moment, and I'm really grateful for that. Calabrian chili mayo is one of the peak human experiences, so give that a try. Let's do one more question, and then I'm gonna start cooking. Come oats. What do you use to oil your counter? I use palm oil and my counter still looks so dehydrated. Should I use more oil or a different oil? So, uh, what, what was the name? Uh, from, of, the, the of the person. Oats. Com oats. Com oats. Com oats asks, what do I oil my table with? And they say that they oil it a lot, but it's still dry looking. And, um, I mean, I probably oil this table not as often as I should. It, sh it should be doing it once a week with the amount of use that it sees. I don't know what you're using to clean it. That could be the factor that's doing it because the cleaner often dehydrates the wood really hardcore. If you're using a really abrasive or uh, uh, chemically um, whatever cleaner, um, I use diluted vinegar. So uh, I think it's, the, the, it's like a 10% vinegar solution, like a quarter cup of vinegar to a, a quart of water. I'm just making that up. But I just pour vinegar in a bottle and then I top it with water. It's, it, as long as you get the ratio right, <laughs> It's, it's a natural disinfectant, but it's also just great for cleaning wood surfaces. It doesn't dehydrate them that badly, and it doesn't, you know, impregnate them with, with harmful chemicals and bleach and stuff. One more. What does that mean? Can yes, one out? more. Yeah. And you, big shout out. What? Can you please give my boss, Dwayne Beckett, a shout out? He's been a great foodie mentor for me and a fan of yours. And what's the name of the person who said this? Michelle Reed. Michelle Reed asked to give Dwayne Beckett a big shout out. It's his birthday? Just a big shout out. Dwayne Beckett, if you're watching, big shout out to you from your employee, whose name I already, Michelle Reed. <laughs> big shout out, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for the super chat, Michelle Reed. <clears throat> and now, I think it's time to start cooking. Oh, okay, I guess we got a really good question. I'm ready for it, let's hear it. My favorite Rochester restaurant of all time, without a doubt, Nicholas Tahoe's. I'm kidding. Uh, the <laughs> Nick Tahoe's, Nick Tahoe's and, and, and I have a, have a, a strained relationship. <laughs> so <laughs> I wish them all the best in the world. Um, but my favorite restaurant in Rochester, this is going to be an aged question because I only go home for Thanksgiving and and Christmas, and, and, and I'm, I'm not eating out at restaurants when I go, so I'm not savvy to the, the, the dining scene in Rochester, which I understand is doing amazing things. Yes, thank you for the mac and cheese. 
Um, uh, I, I love the, the, uh, the uh, 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 revelry. That's been there for years now, uh, but revelry is, has always been a great time when I've gone there. Um, there's a French place called, it's called Fond? Anybody? <laughs> is it called Fond? There's a French place. And it, it's Simply Crepes. It's Simply Crepes. <laughs> no, Simply, Simply Crepes, genuinely great. Like I went back there maybe two years ago and it was, I really enjoyed myself. And so my, I thought that, it would, anyway, for those of you who don't know, there's, <laughs> in case anybody who hasn't heard, there's a place in Rochester and Raleigh, uh, North Carolina called Simply Crepes. Yeah, they have those two locations. And I thought it was like, they just, you know, somebody accidental, but no, it's the same, same owners. They were like, we need two R towns, Rochester, Raleigh. Uh, and uh, they live up to their name. They, they do one thing and they do it well, crepes. And my job there in the summer of my 16th year uh, was making, was, was, was a, a crepe, crepe, a, a crepe, crepist? A crepe maker. Uh, and and I uh, just stood there all day over the griddle just making crepes. <laughs> just making crepes. And um, uh, that was one of my earliest jobs. My first job was, at a, was as a, uh, a playground equipment salesman, but that's another show. Simply Crepes uh, does all different kinds of, you know, the classic crepes, but they also do like deep fried, like burrito style ones. And they make these things, crepe chips, where they just take the leftover crepes, they cut them up into, into bite-sized pieces, uh, coat them with cinnamon sugar and bake them until they're crisp, and then serve them with a vanilla kind of frosting dip. And that shit rocks. So check it out next time you're in Shown Place. Is that really? what it's called? Shown Place, right? Shown Place? Yeah. yeah. That thing down by the bridge, right? I'm a cold tower. Coal Tower. No, it was it was right next to the Coal Tower. I was an Aladdin's guy. Oh, I that's, love, that's that is honestly my answer. But Aladdin's is where I discovered my hatred of cilantro. They had a pasta that I would get there every time I went, and I'd eat it and be like, "Why do I not like this?" And <laughs> I was a stubborn little asshole, and and uh, uh, but anyway, the, the, so much of my my formative years were spent in Shown Place. Come to think of it. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> We're gonna do what? Got one more. One more. One more question. Twenty dollar super chat. Twenty dollar super chat from Dark Wolf. Dark Wolf. <clears throat> Dark Wolf. Would you please consider doing a meal prep video in the future? Something like five dishes you can make with oven baked salmon or similar. I'm always stumped about how to keep lunch and dinner from getting boring. Well, that I mean, oven baked salmon. It's hard to it's hard to zhuzh that up. First thing I would do is marinate it in miso. That like you know, black cod is usually the subject of miso marination, but salmon takes to it very well. So give that a try. But we also have done uh, freezer meals. That's a great one for meal prep. And then also simple weeknight dinners. I believe is another uh, basics episode where uh, one of the recipes was a, a, a one a one rim baking sheet meal. You make the whole meal on a rim baking sheet. It was uh, roasted asparagus, roasted salmon, and potatoes, I believe. Uh, but we're well overdue to do another meal prep episode because that I hear that all the time. It's something I deal with as well. Just like you know, what I, I actually, I'm sorry. Recently, uh, check out the rotisserie chicken episode. It's everything to do with the rotisserie chicken. That is in and of itself meal prep um, because if you roast a whole chicken or if you buy rotisserie chicken. You could feed yourself for a few days off of it. You, you know, you could eat part of it fresh and then use the leftover dark meat for soup. You could use the carcass for making stock. You can use the breast for making chicken salad uh, or um, uh, the other thing that we made, quesadillas. Uh, quesadillas are a great ingredient stretcher because then, then all you're doing is bathing everything in cheese and it all tastes good. So you just make quesadillas out of everything. But, Roast, that's my favorite way to prep meals for, for the week is, is uh, roasting a whole chicken and just using every part of, of it slowly and in different sort of leftovers mm -hmm. recipes. But we'll do a new meal prep episode soon. Should I start cooking? I think I should. Okay, folks, we are headed over to the stovetop where there, I, I should have put a pot. Definitely should have put a pot because now I'm gonna make some noise. There we go. I could have gotten that one. Nope. Okay. Nope. All, right. well, all right. Okay. My bad, everybody. Sorry. There we go. So, 
We're live over here. We're cool. Yeah. All right. So I have the Babish 12 inch high walled saute pan here. Um, and I have four cups. Is it blown out? My bad. Oh, we're about to put milk in it. So it's going to get really blown out. Let's, let's shut that down a little bit. I have four cups of whole milk. And this recipe, we initially took a little inspiration from, uh oh, oh, it's doing the thing. Just in time for the live stream. I think this stops in a second. There it goes. <laughs> okay. So we took a little inspiration from uh, America's Test Kitchen, uh, who, who uh, cooked their pasta in milk to create a nice starchy emulsifying liquid to make the cheese sauce. But they rely on American cheese to emulsify things together because American cheese is so full of emulsifiers uh, to keep it stable. Nico! <laughs> and uh, uh, what, what we did was take the cook in milk element from that and we decided to incorporate another trick that we learned from another chef, Luciano Monocilio, and his trick for making cacio e pepe, which is to do it in a blender. And we discovered that by using some egg yolks for stability and richness, uh, along with the cheese and the hot pasta cooking milk, we could easily make a unbreakable, foolproof, roux-free sauce. So that's the story of that recipe. And that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna bring this milk to the boil, as I understand is the grammatically correct way to refer to it. I'm gonna do that with the lid on because Sometimes too much evaporation with this, you might end up with not enough sauce. If anything, you could pad this with an extra half cup of milk if you want to be safe. But if you're using exactly four cups, I like to lid it down both so it comes to a boil sooner and so you don't lose too much moisture from evaporation. But keep an eye on it because anybody who's boiled milk on the stovetop before knows that it's not boiling one second and then the next second it's all over your, your cooktop. So just keep an eye on that. You guys keep an eye on that for me. I'm busy, I'm doing other stuff. So, I'm gonna keep this here because I'm gonna strain the cooking liquid back into it via the strainer. There we are. No, I'm just gonna use that, that's fine. Thank you anyway though. Look at how well that captures that. It's almost as though it were made for it, even though these are from two distinctly separate companies. But then again, every, just three corporations rule the world, so you know, what are you gonna do about it? Um, oh, and also I'm supposed to season the milk with two teaspoons of salt. Just real quick over back to the stove top. I'm going to throw, I'm just eyeballing it because it's pretty hard to, it, it, it's, it's pretty hard to undersalt this. There's generally some salt in the cheese. What's going on? There's so many concerned looks around the room. It's freaking me out. What's happening? <laughs> oh! You found it? No, it's not. This is the other one from the other blender. Oh, no, here it is. You found it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna bring the blender over because the blender is our tool of choice in making this cheesed sauce. And uh, we found that the best pasta, uh, you can really use any elbow macaroni for, for this recipe, but uh, uh, we found that the best one was, um, what brand is this? Dikeko. Dikeko, which I love all their products. I believe Dikeko hit me up because you guys rock. Uh, this stuff cooks in five minutes. The faster it cooks, the better because then it's not going to absorb as much liquid and you'll have more liquid left over for the sauce. If you don't have enough liquid left over for the sauce, you can always pad it with a little extra milk. Uh, it'll cool things down so you might not have to heat them back up on the stove top. But the great thing about this sauce is that it's damn near unbreakable. You could, if you hit it with too much heat, you could potentially cook the yolks. It might coagulate, but I've hit it with some heat. And it's not, it's not had a problem. So it's really, a, come on, Andy. It's really, it's really a marvel of, of uh, modern science. Uh, so this stuff cooks in five minutes. Most elbow macaroni cooks in a very short period of time, which is why we recommend el elbow macaroni. And because it's mac and cheese. Come on, what are we doing here? Uh, and then for the cheese, you can really use any cheese you want. As long as it's not, I wouldn't use like just straight Parmesan because that might be a little much. But here we have a mixture of Gruyere, cheddar, and don't tell me, Monterey Jack. I love Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack is probably my favorite cheese, Pepper Jack in particular, but Monterey Jack is just so edible. I could just eat it. Anyway, uh, 
the, that's our great melter. That's our really creamy factor. So is the, the cheddar because you want to use a relatively young cheddar. This is not an extra sharp cheddar. You could use an extra sharp cheddar because again, this is on an unbreakable sauce. And then Gruyere is, is the more aged of the group and it's definitely got the most flavor. Mm. Tastes like the caves of Ross. And <clears throat> okay, so to do the prep for this, we have to do some prep for this. I'm gonna start by centering this up. Nope. Well, you know what? No, I'm gonna do this. There we go. That way it fits on camera A. That's how we do things. So, into this blender, we're gonna deposit three yolks of egg. These, I think, are optional. If you left them out, you could still do it. Uh, maybe just use more milk because you need more liquid to process with the cheese. But the egg yolks are bringing stability, but also richness. Like this is, you know, it's a very rich, rich dish. And did, do you have, that's the reserve cheese? Yay. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do here is separate these eggs. I don't know which camera is what, but um, yeah, I'm going to separate these eggs. Uh, basically, that's just the process of cracking them on a flat surface like that. And then I am passing the yolk back and forth between the halves of the shell to isolate the yolk, putting the white in a little container for use in a different recipe. Egg white omelet, meringues, that's it. That's all you can use egg yolks for. Pretty sure. Or egg whites. Never mind. So, getting these three egg yolks into the blender. Come on. Come on. Stop! Ah! Sawn shell. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's only two pieces. Should I fish them out? Should I do it? Alright, I'm going to use the old standby. Use a little bit of eggshell to fish out the eggshell pieces. This is dumb. I'm going to start fresh. Let's get two eggs, please. Well, actually, I got them. That's a protein. I'm off camera, right? Thank you for the new eggs. Perfect. So we redid that. That stiff is definitely not the same. There's no eggshells in there. <laughs> this is a book about making mistakes, OK? I am absolved from all mistake making. If I made a book about mistakes, am I right? <laughs> Do the math. Okay. Cracking on a flat surface. Oh, whoa! See? See what happened? See? See? Wow. 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 See? That sneaks right up on you. That sneaks right up on you. Whew. There's five people in the room and none of us notice. Oh, man. Okay. Last egg yolk in. Maybe do this part. Oh, we got a little shell piece here. Maybe do this part before you start boiling your milk so it's all freaking done and you're not stressed about it like I am right now. Egg yolks and all the cheese goes into the blender along with two spices in particular. Let me start cooking this pasta real quick. Let's cut over to the uh, stove top. I'm gonna dump the pasta in. Give it a stir. Always when you add pasta to the water, immediately give it a stir because otherwise it's going to stick together as it cooks and you can, and all the king's horses and all the king's men could not separate your pasta again. There we go. And I'm going to keep this lidded again to uh, minimize moisture loss. All right, so we got our egg yolks and our cheese in there. Plus, I'm going to add, what is this, like a teaspoon of, uh, teaspoon of Dijon mustard? Are you telling me to wipe off my hands or something? Why? Because there's egg on them? Nobody cares. <laughs> um, thank you very much for, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Okay. Now. Mustard's in, and I'm also going to add, totally optional, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is just going to add the, the in inference of heat. It's not going to be a spicy mac and cheese unless you're Nico. Hey, sorry, he just he said it was spicy that one time. Um, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> inside jokes, you guys get it. Um, what's better for live streams than inside jokes that nobody gets? Uh, so it's, it's to make things just, just a tiny little bit spicy. You ever read salt, fat, acid, heat? Heat, spice, especially in very minuscule amounts, can just amplify and awaken flavors. So that's why we're adding a little mustard that's going to sort of accent the cheesiness. Mustard, cheese, very kind of similar uh, 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 flavor profiles. And um, cayenne, just a little bit of heat. No salt in here because we already salted the milk and if you want to salt it any more, do it after the fact because you don't want to over, you, you can always go forward, you can't go back. Just like life. Okay, we got this. I'm gonna put this over here and I'm gonna put this back over here. I don't know why I'm saying that out loud. I could just do it. There's those. So now once, I'm gonna give the pasta another stir. Especially when cooking in milk, it could stick together. So, oh, it, in fact it is. So keep an eye on it, keep it moving. And tell yourself it's all gonna be okay. Because it is, probably. I don't know your situation. I'm not trying to get in trouble for suggesting something. That, anyway, uh, just giving it a little stir, making sure, I got a couple little clumpers here. I'm just breaking them up. Uh, that is the one sort of disadvantage to cooking the pasta and milk is that it can stick together. We say in the directions to stir it frequently, right? I sure hope so. Um, and uh, yeah, so there we go. Little stir, got stuff separated, good to go. Cover it back up. And I'm going to stir it uh, sooner this time than last time. Did you set a timer by, by chance? Oh, what time we got it? 1.52. Oh, wow. We have 1 minute and 52 seconds to kill. Just enough time for Nico to tell me a question. <laughs> I'm gonna have a sip of coffee while we do so. Oh. oh, okay, there's some internal discussions happening here. In the meantime, I'll ask myself a question. What's my favorite sport? I don't have one. I'm not a big sports guy. What do you got? <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna chat from BC underscore A. Got into your content late, missed out on your live streams back in the day. Would love to see them come back. Either way, happy to support the cause. BC underscore A, I appreciate your understanding. <laughs> it's just like, I'd love to see him come back, but I understand. <laughs> Thank you uh, for, for understanding. That genuinely means a lot. Um, I've missed doing them. Like I said uh, earlier, uh, I, I, when we first started this, I got a little personal and said that 2022 was a really rough year, and I honestly didn't feel up to the pressure and the, uh, the sort of intensity of a live stream. It takes a lot of energy. It's, 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 uh, it's, it, you know, it just feels pretty fraught. And, um, but it's so much fun. Like we did a mini live stream with Walmart uh, a couple month and a half ago and it reignited our passion. Which camera am I looking at? That one. Uh, it reignited our passion for live streams. It was so much fun and the, the, the time just flew by. Speaking of which, it's already been in a freaking hour. Can you believe it? Would you believe it? I don't. My watch must be wrong. It's a Rolex. It's not. <sighs> All right. So, 10 seconds. See, this is what I mean. Uh, no, no, I, I, I've, I've missed, even just now, even just go, going for the first hour here, I, I miss doing the live streams so much. They're so much fun. Wow, that's loud. Yeah, no. Mission accomplished. Got George W. Bush over here. <laughs> he, 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 oh. he stood on an aircraft carrier in front of a huge sign that was like, we did it. He's a pretty quiet guy, actually. <laughs> pretty yeah, soft-spoken. Uh, anyway, I'm never going to compare you to a former president ever again. Miss Jimmy Carter. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think it needs a little more. But can I get a spoon just so I can scoop one out, put it in my mouth, and t see if it's... Uh, and people have uh, been curious as to whether or not I have asbestos mouth in that I can put objects of any temperature in it, including pasta directly out of cooking water. And the answer is yes my one superpower. It's like those memes where it's like, wish, pick one superpower, float one inch off the ground, <laughs> make tic-tacs come out of your fingers whenever, 
the, there's a full moon, or be able to put hot stuff in your mouth. Either way, it's super. I got a little bit of stickage here because I was non, I was an absent dad uh, when I was uh, putting the cheeses together. This, see, this, this, this is a great example of why you gotta do mise en place. Because uh, if I had put the, the uh, cheeses in the blender and separated my eggs and all that jazz before putting the pasta in the cooking water, this wouldn't have happened because then my only job would have been to stir the pasta. So I did this on purpose to, to show you why you have to do mise en place. This was a purposeful thing. I meant to do this. Um, but it looks like we're good now. There's still a couple little clusters, but here, here's the weird thing about me. I like undercooked pasta. I do. I've always eaten undercooked pasta as a snack. I'm looking a little low on milk. Could you grab me a half cup of milk? I'm just gonna toss it in there just to be safe. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah, no, okay. So we had a little we had a little overflow action. I think we might have lost a little bit of milk. A lot of evaporation happened there. So I'm gonna cut it with an extra half cup, maybe a three quarter cup, I don't know. No, half a cup's fine. I'll give you one cup. Okay. All right, I'm gonna cut it with some extra milk because I, th I think we lost a little. Start with just like that, that seems good. That seems good. I also don't wanna cool it down so much that it stops cooking the pasta. So we haven't lost our simmer. Haven't lost our simmer after all these years. Haven't lost our simmer. Nico, any questions? <laughs> Kimberly Crimmins, which is a fun name, uh, uh, asks, uh, how messy would it be to spatchcock a goose and smoke it on the Traeger? And the answer is very. I don't know. I've never made a goose. I don't know. Sounds messy. Sounds like there's a lot of fat, and fat means mess. If you ever made wings in the oven, you know what happens when fat. <laughs> when fat fats, you know? All right. Let's try another one. All right, we're Gucci. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to strain this pasta, carefully reserving the cooking liquid, which actually I probably didn't even need to top up. That looks pretty substantial. <clears throat> That's cooking, folks. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this, put it right back in the hot pan so that it stays Comparatively warm. Okay. Could I give this? Oh, I can just put this right in the soapy sink. There we go. Now, my apologies, it's gonna get loud. Do these mics have cut the, the limiters? Is this gonna blow everybody's ears out? Should you should you what? Should we go to a commercial? Mute it on OBS. Let's just see what happens. Um, <laughs> okay. So now, with the blender running, and I'm gonna not be able to talk for a minute because it's gonna make some noise. With the blender running, I'm going to slowly stream the hot cooking milk in, which is going to emulsify together into a cheese sauce. Let's see what ha happens. That's exactly how much milk I put in, <laughs> so I didn't need to do that. I just got nervous because we're on TV. Um, where'd my spoon go? Here it is. I'm gonna taste the sauce for taste. Mm-hmm. 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 Yup. Back over here. Ready? And into the pasta it goes. Every last drop. Otherwise, the cheese man will get you in the night. 
Can I get that extra cheese over here? Thank you. All right, let's, now you could stop here. This is a perfectly beautiful McCann cheese. A, a, a tribute to its homeland of Rochester, New York. That's where mac and cheese was invented. That's not true. And now I'm going to turn things up to 11, so to speak, by adding an additional four ounces. Four ounces? I think it's four ounces. Four ounces of shredded cheese, additional. And I'm just gonna mix that in until it's incorporated. You see? Just mix it in until it's evenly distributed throughout the pasta. And then, what am I gonna do? Well, I'll tell you. I'm gonna shut it down for three minutes. That's just gonna be just enough time to melt the additional cheese, which is going to make this into the stretchiest, porniest mac and cheese you've ever seen. It's frankly, we should put a not safe work warning on this, on this episode. We, we, we hit the not for kids button, right? I did, I did it, so yeah, no, I didn't, I, I didn't tick that box. I was asking hypothetically. Okay, in three minutes we're going to have the meltiest, stringiest mac and cheese you've ever seen. Um, but until then, let's take it, let's field another question. Nico, what do we got? Mitchell Thompson asks, any plans for your next tattoo? Mitchell Thompson asks, any plans for my next tattoo? And the answer to that is no. I don't know what to get. I have the itch. I'm dying to get a new one. In fact, I'd really love to... Wait, where did I want to get it? Somewhere. Star Trek. Which Star Trek tattoo? Oh, no. I can't. It's too, it's too much. I was going to get like the rank pins from Star Trek, next gen <laughs> specifically. They like to show their rank, they have like dots. Kendall wants me to get a Star Trek tattoo and a Neopets tattoo and a strawberry milk tattoo and I'm just not going to do it. Um, uh, I don't know what I'm going to get for my next tattoo. I have the itch. I want to fill this real estate very, very badly. This feels empty and naked and nude. Maybe something here. Um, but I don't know what to get. And whatever the next super chat is, I'm going to get. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I don't have to. I just said it. It's, I didn't sign a fucking contract. Excuse my language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else? What else we got? I'm sorry. I don't know what my next tattoo is. I'd love to get one, though. Yes? What's your favorite buzzed late night snack? Buzzed late night snack. What kind of buzz are we talking about here? Are we talking about a, a high gravity beer after a long day? Or are we talking about a long, fat, thick bone sticking out of my mouth? On fire. Joint. Weed. Cannabis. We have a cannabis can brand coming to market. I should answer that question for, first. Uh, what is my favorite buzzed late night snack? I love those Harvest Crisps that are, <laughs> that are so hot right now. I, I love them. They're so good for you. It's not possible. But my favorite, favorite late night buzzed snack God, I try so hard not to eat in the evening. I'm so old. <laughs> so very old. If I eat after eight, I just think about it for the next three days. Just like, <laughs> what am I doing? Real quick before I answer that question. Here's my favorite late night <laughs> buzz snack. Because look at how quickly this came together. And look at what it does. Look at that. Come on, folks. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It, I mean, God, look at that. That's nuts. Look at the stringiness. You've never seen so stringy a mac and cheese in all of your days. Yep. <laughs> Baseball. Mm. That's so good. And <laughs> what? <laughs> and <the laughs> oh, it's in my beard, isn't it? Is that what you're laughing at? Oh, cool. The old 
catch her in the rye. <laughs> um, we, we have the stringiest, dreamiest mac and cheese. And this came together, if we weren't live streaming this, this would have been 15 minutes. And I could have done it, Buzz. I probably could have done it better <laughs> if, I were, if I were a little buzzed and not live, live streaming. Speaking of a little buzzed, before we uh, uh, slam that steak, why don't we crack that crack? What? Before we, <laughs> why don't we crack that champagne? Is what, <laughs> what am I saying? Sorry. Uh, oh, so th this is a great late night buzz snack, but um, uh, if I'm not cooking, if I'm just making, or I'm making, if, if I'm not cooking, if I'm just eating, then I'm probably gonna go with, I do love Harvest Snaps, but um, chips and salsa, you know? I mean, that's that, last night in the green room for the New York show, they gave us some, um, those blue corn chips with Carolina Reaper salsa, which was a bold choice for, for people about to go on stage, but it was awesome. It just woke me up. It's like a cup of coffee. Huh? No problem, no problem? We all good? Okay. I just see concern. I just wanna make sure we're good. Um, but that's my, that's my answer. What else we got? Do you want to crack the crack? Yeah, let's crack the crack. Oh, we got the flutes. A flute for us all. I'm just going to grab the glassware, folks. Don't mind me. It's not like I'm hosting a live stream right now. All right. We have the crystal. And... For Steve, do we have uh, like a seltzer or something we can throw in here? And guys, I just want to crack this open to share with the staff to celebrate the release of the new book that I'll stand up here, hopefully where it's visible on camera. I don't know. I can't see it. And hopefully I'm not going to put my eye out on live TV. But this is to celebrate uh, uh, the culmination of a year and a half's work. Um, you know, my name might be on the cover, but everybody in this room woo, really, really played a pivotal role in making this and the entire channel happen. So this one goes out to you guys, and it goes out to all of you who are watching because we obviously couldn't do this without you. Cheers, everybody. Let's get that that aforementioned buzz on. Why, why am I bad at this right now? Let's do, let's do that again. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There's that restaurant training still clanging around in the back of my prefrontal cortex. Not that part. What's the part that you still remember? The medulla oblongata. Mama's wrong again. I remember that movie. The Water Boy. I remember that movie. Little Nicky. Same. What's everybody's favorite Adam Sandler film? So, 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 click. Click. <laughs> click is a great movie. Yeah, I mean, just because a movie's sad doesn't make it bad. That was the that was the big mistake everybody made with that movie was they were like, it's sad. It must be a terrible movie. <laughs> I made the same mistake when I saw it. I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, sorry, I probably shouldn't swear, should I? It's too late now. You can't take it back live. There we go. I'm sorry I did such an unprofessional job pouring this champagne. But, to be fair, I'm also being entertaining. Um, ooh, ooh. God, why am I so bad at this? What's wrong with me as a man? Well, Thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been a really fun night, and it's, I mean, what time is it now? Man, we've been going for 75 minutes. I cannot believe it, and we still, like, we're barely scratching the surface. We're gonna be here all night. I'm kidding, we have an 8.30 dinner reservation, so we're gonna be out here uh, relatively soon. Um, but before then, let's field a couple questions while I'm doing this whole stupid, bad pouring technique. Nico? I mean, we all know them. We all know Click's the best. Can we ask them for questions? Because they, they just jumped up. Okay. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> I put you guys on a movies kick. My bad. 
Uh, just a reminder, the Super Chats tonight are going to a good cause. All the proceeds from Super Chats this evening are going to No Kid Hungry. So Super Chat away. We'll see the question faster. But until then, if there are any questions in the general chat, I'm wide open. Okay. <laughs> or we can just discuss Adam Sandler films. I'm also very down to discuss um, uh, 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 Frasier more, always. And... But, How many episodes have there been? Of Frasier? Of the new one? Uh, there's three. three. Yeah. Small. No, I've, I've watched the first two. Okay. Um, here you are, Steve. Thank you. For your cheersing pleasure. Kendall, Nico, here you are. Here, let's all come in here and cheers on, on camera because uh, this is all of us saying thank you to all of you for an incredible seven years a exciting new release, and we're really happy to be here as a family to celebrate. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. That's nice. Mm. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anybody want some mac and cheese? Oh, do you want a plate? Mac Not particularly. Oh, yeah. Do you want a plate is the real question. Here, there's mac and cheese up for grabs here. And I can start doing a steak. Uh, once, once you're ready, now take your, take your time. Um, but yes, we have a question, so let's, let's field that question. What's your suggestion for a beginner knife? In the name of the, I need the screen name and the, and, and the question. Okay. Hassam Amir uh, asks, what is your uh, recommendation for a beginner knife? And um, I mean, I think the best place to go is really one of two directions. Uh, you've got, first off, definitely a Babish knife. <laughs> but second off, uh, either a Chef's or a uh, Santoku. The reason I suggest uh, Santoku is because they're generally smaller. You can definitely get big old Santokus, but like, a nice little one like this, especially if you have small hands or if you're just starting out, like, you know, it's much easier to maneuver. A big old 10 inch chef's knife is pretty intimidating to control and to use properly if you're just starting out. Likewise, uh, a, a chef's knife, as long as you don't get a huge one, this is an eight inch, uh, this is gonna be very maneuverable. It's gonna be very, uh, it's gonna have lots of varied uses and it's gonna be easier to use than, you know, Sometimes when you go into the kitchen supply store, they got those big, you know, restaurant style, 10 inchers, 12 inchers. And uh, unless you're a pro, you can't take all that. Sorry. <laughs> and so yeah, I, I, tend to, I tend to recommend those knives for beginners. We also, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to showcase the cookware, or am I? Uh, but we have the cleft knife, this guy is really great because uh, not only does it have all the utility of a chef's knife, because it, apart from that bit, it pretty much is a chef's knife. It's almost the same. Oh. <laughs> I was doing that for me, not for you. Apart from that extra bit, it's pretty much a chef's knife, but we added the extra bit so that you could scoop and smash. It's great for smashing garlic cloves, scooping stuff after you've chopped it. It's got a lot of utility. It's a really great knife. It's available now. Um, so, you know, just look, for, also, I would really recommend trying it out. Uh, if you order our knives on Amazon, they're cheap enough that you can try them out and, and that's it. But if you can go to a place that sells knives and if you can try it out, see how it feels in your hand. Uh, longevity and like fatigue is a real thing. If you have a knife that has too sharp uh, a, uh, an angle on the back or, or, or too rough an edge, it can really wreak havoc on your finger after you've chopped a few onions. So try it out, see if it's comfortable, see if it feels good in your hand. Um, but yeah, no, there's an overlong answer to that question. Let's uh, remind folks that uh, Super Chats tonight, the, the um, proceeds are going to No Kid Hungry, so please ask away. We'll see your question faster. I have a steak here. Do we have any that we wanna go over? Sure, from Mike DeCare. Did you or Josh from Mythical Kitchen ever get a back tattoo of the other person? <laughs> yes, we did. Josh of Josh Shearer of uh, Mythical Kitchen um, did indeed get a back tattoo of my face. He did. And if you, it's on, it's on his channel? Where's that video live? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on his channel. He, he came here and we, we talked about chicken parm and he got uh, a lower back tattoo of my face. 
And in solidarity, I got his spork. I got his signature spork tattoo just to, 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 to show him that there's no hard feelings. Uh, but also, I'm going to see Josh in a couple days. I'm heading to L.A. We're going to shoot something. Very excited uh, to see him again. He is a comedic dynamo. The, the guy is one of the funniest human beings on the planet. He's probably definitely got to be the funniest uh, cooking personality on the planet. So he, he's, 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 a rare, he's a rare bird. And uh, I'm very excited to see him again. So, <clears throat> now, what we're going to do with this steak is we're going to sear and then butter baste it. Uh, this is just about the thickness where I like to do that. It's thick enough that you could reverse sear, forward sear. In other words, oh, I'm here. Uh, it's thick enough that you could reverse sear it. That is, start it off in the oven uh, at a low temperature, like 250 degrees in the oven, and bring it up to 115 internal and then sear to bring it up to 125. <clears throat> it's just thick, thick enough where you could do that, plus it's bone in, which is helpful, but it's also thin enough that I think we could finish it entirely in the pan. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to sear it in cast iron and then butter baste it to a state of completion. And yes, that is a funny phrase. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, we got a 12 incher here. We got a stray noodle, not anymore. It's the name of my um, ska band, Stray Noodle. Spaghetti incident, you get it. <clears throat> All right. So now, over here on the stovetop, cranking this guy on a medium high. Medium high, high. You want this to get really wicked, ripping hot. I'm gonna do a high smoke point oil. I've got peanut oil here. Fair amount. It doesn't have to be a crazy amount, but you definitely want enough to coat the bottom of the pan in like a, a, a good, you know, just sheen of oil. Uh, the, the, the big fear with cast iron is that it's sticky. It's a sticky cookware. But the more fat you use and the higher heat you use, the less stickage you're going to have to deal with. But don't overdo the fat. Otherwise, you're going to end up deep frying the steak a little bit, which sounds delicious. But big pockets of moisture, air bubbles can occur, and you'll get <laughs> splatter everywhere first degree burns and just the, it'll be the worst night of your life. So don't over fat, don't under fat, fat just right, the babish way. Uh, I am patting this steak dry, which I just did without talking about it. So I'll just do it again for, for demonstration purposes. I'm patting this steak dry <laughs> in order to remove the excess moisture. Uh, salting it can draw out some liquid and while normally we want that liquid to be reabsorbed over time, uh, we don't have time right now. So a steak will not sear as well if there's moisture on it because that moisture would have to evaporate first before any Maillard could take place. So the drier it is, the better crust we're gonna get. Now, the plan here is to slam this baby with heat on both sides, build up a robust, powerful crust and then uh, turn down the heat some, throw in a ton of butter, some herbs and garlic, and spoon it. Uh, spoon it <laughs> with butter <laughs> to a state of completion, uh, which is both going to, you know, it's gonna be a gentler heat environment to bring the steak up to, up to temp, and it's going to just bathe the steak in butter, which try to tell me that's a bad idea. You can't. I'm probably drunk if you, if you try to convince me of that. Tonight, I'm very excited. We're taking the crew to Gramercy Tavern to celebrate. Really awesome restaurant. It's like a once a year kind of restaurant. <laughs> it's, you know, tasting menu prices. Um, but we're really excited to go there and eat our faces off. So don't eat too much of that mac and cheese because you have a sixth course meal? How many? Five. Five course meal. Never mind. Have all the mac and cheese you want. I'm going to have more. All I need is a one spoonful. This was for butter basting, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. If there's one thing I've learned, the bigger you bite, bite you take on live TV, the better. <clears throat> hmm. Another question. From whom? From Eric Fox. Favorite recipe from the book. I just got mine delivered today. Also, congrats on the new book. Can't wait to read. Eric Fox, thank you very much for getting the book. Thank you for the question. What's my favorite recipe in the book? I think we, we did this earlier on, but the oleo sac, the, 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 um, 
really orange, bless you, the really orangey, bless you. Oh no, you just went like that. Um, the really orangey orange chicken, uh, the, the blender mac and cheese I love. Also, I'm, I'm obsessed with the cookies. Like, I, I talked about this in a recent uh, cookie episode. Oh, by recent, I mean like two years ago. Uh, God, I'm getting old. Um, but cookies where you just throw all the stuff in the, whoa, we're smoking, sorry. Perfect timing, actually. It's smoking just, just enough. All right, so we have smoke coming off the oil. Not a huge cloud of it, but just nice little wisps. I'm putting the mic close. Ooh, it's spattering my neck really good. Ooh, it's getting me. But this is for your sound enjoyment. Ah. Okay. And there that shall sit until a gloriously well-developed crust has formed. Um, but back to your question, Eric Fox. Um, thank you for getting the book. My favorite recipe in the book. Let me look at the recipe list. <laughs> Why don't, I come sometimes forget which ones are in here because, well, there's so darn many of them. There's over a hundred, there's over a hundred major recipes and then a lot of those recipes have sub recipes like uh, uh, the babka, there's three different fillings that we offer. The poke bowls, there's there's sushi rice, there's tenkasu, there's spicy mayo sauce, those have uses elsewhere. Um, uh, da, 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 like uh, the, the um, Nashville hot chicken has a recipe for quick bread and butter pickles. There's, there's 100 main recipes in here, but then there's all these sub recipes. Um, my favorite, oh, I forgot shepherd's pie is in here. I love shepherd's pie. I kind of just want shepherd's pie right now. I don't know if that's actually an answer or if it's just what I'm craving at the moment. Pimento smash burgers. I serve these every July 4th. That sounds like a made up like, you know, Food Network story. Like I make these every July 4th for my friends and family. But no, I genuinely make these every, every July 4th. Uh, smash burgers, uh, uh, I'll put the griddle out there, uh, the big flat top on the grill so I can get it ripping hot and I can do a bunch of smash burgers. And then I make pimento cheese, which is basically just pimento, uh, jarred pimento chilies with uh, cheddar and American and some other uh, stuff and um, and uh, you just basically make smash burgers and, and sandwich some of that cheese between the two patties and you get this incredible melty beautiful bright red patriotic burger <laughs> that's um, that is just one of my favorites so that's got th those are my top three if I just said three recipes I can't remember Herminus <clears throat> asks will you go on the Adam Friedman show to promote the new I've already been on the Adam Friedland show and he's getting two big stars to ever want to have me back again. He got Chet Hanks on there. I don't think he needs me anymore. He doesn't remember who I am. No, Adam's a great, Adam's a great guy and uh, I'd happily go back on there anytime. Okay, nope, need an glove because that's getting hot. There we go. Ooh, we got some smoke coming off of that and I sure would love to turn on our ventilation right now but that'll ruin the sound. So I mustn't. Ooh, almost there. It, it helps to move the steak around a little bit because when you first drop it down in the pan, sometimes there can be these pockets where the, the meat hits the, the pan and no oil gets between it and the, and the, and the pan. And that w then you end up with this sort of s patchy browning. So moving it around not only exposes it to different levels of heat because there's hot spots in every pan, but also it, um, it, it re-coats it with oil so you get a better crust. So we're almost there on this side. Let me just show you where we're at. You gotta, there we go. Yeah, that's looking good, but you see what I'm talking about? There's a couple little patches here where the oil, where the meat had just like, sandwich to the pan, no oil got in there, that or it's like, you know, a topographical nightmare and th that part's just elevated over the oil and it isn't hitting any fat. That's why we're butter basting, not only because it's going to be delicious, but also because it's going to help brown everything evenly. All that hot butter getting spooned is going to do that. <clears throat> Sorry, Steve, I'm just, I'm pretty much just making camera work challenges for you because we... <laughs> All right. Any other questions? If not, that's okay. That's fine. Did you learn anything from Ethan Chabowski's videos on garlic or Parmesan? I learned everything from Ethan Chabowski's videos on garlic or Parmesan. No, he, he, 
Ethan Kolbaski is one of my favorite creators. He's one of the more informed and informative creatives uh, on, on YouTube, and I've learned more from his videos than I think anybody else's. Him and, and Alex French Guy Cooking, these are, these are research maniacs. They do so much. Is there smoke? There's smoke? No, it's hot. Yeah, it is hot in here. Is the AC off? The AC's off. Okay. Well, anything for our craft, right guys? Right guys? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Whoa, I'm drunk with power right now. I don't think I've ever been called. Oh! Nobody saw that. <laughs> Ooh, I'm glad I'm wearing this glove. That could have been, that could have been untoward. So, we have a beautiful crust on our steak. Look at that, nice and evenly brown. The fat's rendering nicely. We got a uh, thermo pen. Yeah, yeah, everything. Oh, 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 thank you. Mm -hmm. So, truly recommend investing in a quick read digital thermometer probe pen like this one. Thermo pen's amazing, but they are expensive. These are like 100 bucks. You can get one on Amazon for $15 that'll do a great job. Lava Tools, I believe, makes one. Because there are all different kinds of tricks for telling if your steak is done. Poke it. Does it feel like some part of your hand? Then it's not done. But there's all different steaks. There's all different hands. <laughs> there's no consistency. There's no way. Like, once you know and understand steaks, you'll be able to cook them by feel. But until then, check. Check their interiors for doneness. See, this, this looks like a done steak, but it's, it's a balmy 64 degrees inside. So, I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I don't want to, to apply too much heat to it. And, and now that it's coming up to temp, that's the second time now that I've done that. I'm just bathing that burner in oil. Um, now that it's sort of coming up to temp, we can do it with medium heats instead of medium high or high. Let's take a look at this side. Not quite. Once the crust is well developed on both sides, that's when I'm gonna really turn down the, uh, the heat and just start bathing it in butter. Because we don't want the butter to burn, so that can't be too hot. We don't want it to cook for too long because it'll burn anyway. Like butter will eventually brown past the point of perfection, periodically, perennially. Penis. I, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> Uh, that's how I start every game of Wordle. That's my starter word. It's not a good starter word, but it's what I've done every single game. I'm a child. I'm an old child. Very old child. Uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> so, we're almost done with our steak here. Or we're almost ready to butter bathe. I'm gonna stop calling it butter basting. I'm gonna start calling it butter bathing. Doesn't that sound better? Doesn't that sound better? Doesn't that butter sound better? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's take a look. Audience, does that look done? Yeah, it does. All right, I'm gonna give it a flip. Let's check the thickest point just to make sure we're not, yeah, so we're up to 90, 88 right now, perfect. I think that's a perfect point. So, what I'm gonna do is there's already a lot of fat in this pan. There's the oil that I added, plus there's the fat that's rendered out from the steak. If I add the butter straight to that oil, it could be a spattery bit of a mess. So, there's a nice dry part of this pan up here. That's where I'm gonna put the butter so it doesn't make a huge scene. Butter's very dramatic. And I'm going to put three unpeeled cloves of garlic in there. I like to do unpeeled. Because if you do peeled, you're gonna get more garlic flavor, but you're also going to burn the garlic. And if you, if you put them in there unpeeled, then you're basically just roasting it in butter. And when you peel it, you'll have this like soft, mashy clove of garlic that, you'll, that you then get to rub all over your steak like it's oil all over my body. Probably. I've never been naked. So we have this nice brown butter forming here. <laughs> we have this nice uh, butter in here, and as you can see, it's, it's, it's dark. That's mostly the oil. 
but the butter hasn't burned. There isn't little black flecks in there. And that's because we turned down the heat. I'm now down on between medium low and medium. This is going to depend on your stove. All stoves are different. And I make a point of this in the book. If, uh, if depending on who wrote the cookbook, they might have tested the recipes on a La Cronue French top or on a, on a dual uh, electric coil burner. And either way, it's not going to translate to your stove top. So always view cook times and temperatures as sort of guidelines because they're not going to be a direct A to B comparison with what you are working with. So that side's gotten some good action. I'm going to flip it over. And this whole time, the steak is just finishing, coming up to temp. Oh, <laughs> that sounded like a disgusted noise, but it's, it, was, it was a celebratory excited noise. Look at that. Oh, daddy. That used to be like the hot thing to say daddy. Now it's just like... <laughs> Remember when everybody said daddy? <laughs> Guys? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> yeah, I got time for a question, Nico. That's an excellent question. Um, unsung. I feel like regional dishes mostly are pretty well sung. I mean, garbage plate doesn't get its uh, its due process. What? Garbage plate doesn't. <laughs> garbage plate. You know. I mean, I'll admit that the garbage plate is. Well, it's a mess. It's called the freaking garbage plate. I'm allowed to say that. Let me make fun of my own hometown things. All right, so just poking around here. We're hitting 115 in the center, 110 towards the thicker parts, so we're getting close. I like to pull this at 120 because then it's gonna come up 10 degrees or so while resting. Always rest your steak, especially if you're cooking it this way. If you're doing a reverse sear, or a sous vide in particular, you got less to worry about. But when you traumatize meat in this way, that is subject it to extremely high heat rapidly and mercilessly, what you're doing is you're contracting all the muscle fibers. And what that's doing is if you cut into it while they're still contracted and tight and crazy, they're gonna squeeze all the juices out and you're gonna lose a lot of moisture content by not letting your steak rest. How did that come up so fast? Okay, we're done. Can I get a heavier duty plate for resting? I'll serve on that if, if that's all right. I'm also just gonna hit the fat cap a little bit. Why not? Can I... Thank you. Okay, onto a plate it goes, preferably a warm plate, but this will do. And we're obviously just going to throw this straight in the garbage. I'm kidding. We're going to bathe our steak in the butter. And perhaps most importantly, we're going to grab those cloves of garlic. Oh, see, look at that. Clove just popped out of its skin. You know, you know, like a redneck murderer would say. Um, so that cooked at its thickest point. It was it was clocking about 120, 125. It means it's going to come up to 130, 135 after being rested, and that's a perfect doneness for me. If you watch, the, this is a great example of the growth that's taken place over the show. If you watch the one of the earliest episodes of the show, Steak Basics, you'll see that I recommend cooking steaks to 115 which is frankly incorrect. Uh, 115 is, is rare, it is beyond rare. And then it would, it, once, once uh, you let it rest, it would come up to still sub-medium rare. And medium rare is scientifically the optimal temperature at which to serve meat. It is the temperature at which the muscle fibers, uh, uh, are, you know, it's the temperature at which connective tissue begins to break down, Ge gelatin, collagen, all these things become soft and unctuous and mouth coating instead of slippery and gross. And it's just the better way to go. So I, you know, was basically being a snob 
I thought that was cool to be a snob. It's not. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, oh, hey, I almost forgot. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, whoa. Um, I'm just going to do this with a glove because the garlic is still quite hot. And I don't want to burn, burn my precious little fingers. If I was doing this with my mouth, it would be no problem. Should I do it with my mouth? No. I'm going to do it with my mouth. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to rub my, my, my beard all over the steak. I can't get that glove on because I'm too sweaty. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a fork. <laughs> That's a great idea. Can I have a fork? Thank you. Uh, live streams. <laughs> and uh, could I borrow your cutting board to carve this on? Just because I'd like to do it on that. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay. We got this guy who I'm going to impale the fork and then basically using the steak like a cheese grater or garlic grater, I'm just going to rub that all over the damn thing. And that, as you can see, we've sort of taken off a layer of garlic flesh and it's been rubbed onto the steak permanently. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because <laughs> I thought it was funny. <clears throat> Thank you. And once rested, this will be its final resting place. The carving board, which I'm doing on here because as we discussed earlier, cleaning your board too much too abrasive a chemical can dry it out. And uh, this guy also has a juice channel because as much as we let it rest, you're still gonna have some losses. You're gonna suffer some losses. That will happen. Uh, but uh, uh, whatever happens, we're catching the Juice Channel. Juice Channel is a great name for something. <laughs> Besides just a Juice Channel, it's a um, podcast? Um, juice store? Anyway. All right. I'm also just to be decorative. Let's put that there. Yeah, we're, 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 we're aesthetically minded here. And that's it. We got any more questions I can field while, uh, while we're waiting for this? Because it probably needs another five minutes. Yeah, we do. Doesn't sound like it. It's right here. <laughs> From Kyle THM, which show that you were a guest appearance on was your favorite? Kyle THM asks, which guest show that I was a, which show <laughs> that I was a guest on was my favorite? And I mean, I have to, I kind of have to say chef, chef Show because that was one of the defining experiences of my life was going on that show and meeting John and Roy. Roy, who w wrote the forward to the book very kindly. There it is. <laughs> See, Roy Choi. <laughs> so uh, the, fittingly, John Favreau wrote the forward to the Binging with Babish Cookbook and Roy Choi wrote the forward to the Basics of the Babish Cookbook. The next cookbook, forward by, what's the name of that financial guy that you guys like? David Ramsey. <laughs> David Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> the next book, forward by David Ramsey, uh, or I'll make the only sports joke that I know. No, the next book, forward by John Rocker. <laughs> oh, no. I know. Joke. That's the joke, that's the joke. He's an asshole. All right. <clears throat> Oh, he's going to beat me up now. <laughs> My dreams. Okay. Oh, can I get some porn stars? <laughs> every night, every night I'm dreaming I'm being beaten to death by John Rocker. <laughs> okay. It just poured over my hands over the garbage. <laughs> it just poured over my hands. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. 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 All right. Okay. Little... Trick, if you can't get the gloves on, use a little bit of cornstarch. It'll make the gloves slip on easily and you'll look cool in front of your friends. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> All right, I think this is probably ready to carve. Ross is in the comments. Ross! Dave Ramsey might beat you up too. <laughs> oh God, Dave Ramsey. I, I, just, I just 
mili- uh, 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 mobilize some of the meaner people on the planet <laughs> to beat me up. All right, we have our steak here. It's time to chop it up. What am I gonna use for this? How about the uh, chef's knife? That seems like the move. So, to serve, first I'm going to slice along the bone. Looks like we achieved a good medium rare here. And then I'm gonna slice, you know, normally you could do slabs, but I kinda like doing it on a bias like this. And I like doing it, you know, just straight across the steak. This is the cap, which definitely got a little overcooked. As you can see, it's just more like a medium. But luckily the cap is like pure fat, so it is gonna be just fine. Let's see how we did in the body of the steak, or as it's more properly known, the eye. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's I'm, I don't know how it looks on camera, but that is a solid, solid medium to medium rare. <laughs> Safeguarding myself from criticism. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful steak right there. And it is one of my favorite ways to make a steak with all this brown butter. I'm just gonna fan it out a little bit so we can see our work. There we go. And there you have it, a butter basted ribeye. Tempted to pour a little butter over top, but then it's just gonna look wet. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> A butter basted ribeye, one of the many recipes that you will find in the new Basics with Babish cookbook. Hang on a second. Just gonna take care of this right quick. There we go. Took care of the old cornstarch fingers. Let's just make sure that this is found out. I don't want, I don't want people being like, that's well done. It is not. That is, that is, I like it. Isn't that all that matters, that you like it? That's at the core of this book, is that you should put your preferences and those of your diners first. I guess, there we go. Beautiful. There you have it, folks. A quick and easy mac and cheese, a much more advanced and kind of crazy butter-basted whole bone-in ribeye. It's fabulous. We're, even though we're about to go do a five course tasting menu, we're definitely gonna eat this. I'm gonna start with some part of it. How about this guy? Go right for the center. Mm. Where's the steak from, Food Garden? Mm-hmm. Mm. Grass-fed. Is it grass-fed? Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. But normally I don't like grass-fed. You tricked me on my birthday. birthday. It's not my birthday. <clears throat> mm. That's it, folks. Do we have any more questions before we close it out? A couple. Um, can I find a book? While Nico's finding the questions, I'll ask myself another question. What's my biggest fear? <laughs> Uh, my biggest fear is, is, is hurting somebody. Like hitting, like accidentally hitting, if somebody ran out in front of my car and like, that's my biggest fear. I got a it's cause I'm a noble, nice person. I don't want to do that. Yeah, Nico. <laughs> I got a question. Um, Crazy Kid B. Crazy Kid B. What's your favorite cooking movie or chef or movie? Well, chef, yeah, no, I mean, uh, chef's up there. Uh, favorite cooking movie or cooking related movie? Chef's definitely up there. Um, but I mean, you know, Big Night kind of takes the cake for food movies. That's nothing makes you hungrier than Big Night. Um, and also, I just love the ending of Big Night. I'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't rented it yet. But it's it's uh, it, the the ending of Big Night is so beautiful. It's so sad and like like pessimistic and broken but at the same time optimistic and loving. It's very, it's very gorgeous. I, 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 I really recommend you check it out, obviously. It's a timeless classic. And many drivers in it, so like win-win. What else you got? <laughs> ADZY31 asks, 
Any must-have inexpensive kitchen gadgets that make cooking easier slash faster? Must-have inexpensive cooking gadgets that make cooking easier slash faster, asks ADZY87. 31. 87. Why did I put my own birth year to, to him? Some, edip, some, some, some uh, Freudian slip there. Um, uh, easy slash, or I'm sorry, not easy, uh, inexpensive kitchen tool that makes cooking easier or faster. Definitely a big cutting board. This seems like a indulgence, but really it is a necessity. Um, we all get the three pack of cutting boards from, from, from Ikea, and the smallest one isn't big enough to chop a carrot on. Having a big, beautiful work surface like this changes the whole game. It just, it makes cooking more comfortable. It makes you, you, you just feel less stress. Things pile up less quickly and you just have more room to play. So this right here, this guy, you know, wooden cutting boards are gonna set you back a little bit. Uh, we are coming back to market with a wooden cutting board at some point. Um, uh, we had one earlier on, but I wasn't, it wasn't up to snuff. We didn't like it, so we decided to pull it and we're coming back with a, with a be bigger, better one. Uh, but in the meantime, Oxo makes a utility board for 20 bucks, I believe. That is 24 by 16, something like that. And that will change your whole life. So get it right now. Um, what else? Uh, inexpensive. I mean, the pot and or pan that I use the most in the world is this guy. And, you know, triply stainless is going to set you back. There's a mosquito. Uh, I caught him and he, got, and he flew away. I was so sure that I squished him. Anyway. <laughs> so, Tri-ply stainless is going to set you back. This is not inexpensive. However, this is like the one piece of kitchen tools that you need. Like this can cook most things. I love cooking pasta in this because you're cooking in less water, which, which makes starchier pasta water, which is better for emulsifying sauces. Also, it's 12 inches wide, so you can drop spaghetti straight in here. If you ever make spaghetti in a spaghetti pot, so-called, it will stick out at a 45 degree angle and you'll, it'll be cooked unevenly, or worse yet, it'll hang over the edge and the residual heat going up the side of the pot will burn the edge of the pasta. Has that ever happened to you? Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> but with this, you can also, you know, braise and deep fry, like this thing does it all. So I love a 12 inch stainless steel, uh, high walled, that's the key. High walled uh, saute pan and or skillet. Everybody says that, you know, 12 inch uh, cast iron is the only thing you need, not true. It's reactive cookware, you can't make acidic things in cast iron. Cast iron is tough to take care of, you can't put it through the dishwasher. Like, cast iron's great, it's essential, but this is really where it's at. 12 inch high walled stainless steel triply skillet. Anything else? Um, you guys want some steak? Marshall Morgan, I want steak. Mm. Also, what's your least favorite spice or seasoning? My least favorite spice or seasoning is definitely uh, uh, cilantro and or coriander. Um, anybody else? Here, you want to put this in your mouth? There you go. Here, come on, guys. Oh, come here. You want fattier or less fattier? Fatty here, just take this one. Thing, you monster. Kendall, what would you like? Less fatty. Less fatty. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There's ooms all around if you can't hear mm. from my neck. Mm. Mm. You, it's okay. It's all right. mm. No need to be performative. They were they, they were genuine before. Um, I got another one. Hit me. Henry Wynn asks, what video was your favorite to make? Wow. That's a tricky question. <laughs> Approaching Almost 600 total videos now? How many, how many people? I mean, I'm talking just my videos. And I'm, overall, channel is more than that. Excuse me. I believe we're on episode 170 of Basics and like 450 of, of, of binging, something like that. Or 350. Either way, it's about 500 some odd episodes that I've made. And um, so that's pretty, that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough to, to pick. I mean, one of my favorites was the first one that I shot in my new apartment in Soho. Uh, I did the bubble bass burger from, uh, from, from SpongeBob. Uh, had, uh, uh, you know, celebrity guests. Uh, I, that was for Arrested Development, but still. Uh, Sean Evans came through and um, 
But it was really exciting to shoot in a new kitchen, a kitchen that I had sought out specifically to shoot in, not, uh, you know, the previous iteration, which was just trying to make the best of a cramped situation. Uh, so that was really freeing and exciting, and we got to do some kind of wild stuff. Um, the uh, uh, Simpsons, um, New Orleans recreation, when me and Sawyer and, and Rashid went there with uh, the rest of the Made In crew from Nashville, Ross, who's in the chat, uh, uh, um, uh, went to New Orleans and recreated uh, Homer Simpson's food crawl and went to all, what was it, 55 of those restaurants? I think it was like 55 different places. Um, and also just the hilarious irony of on day two when we were there, the, 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 I can't remember their names, but those, those two girls from Sweden, yeah. uh, Iceland or something like that, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, posted exactly what we were doing and it was at first disheartening and then it was just fun and and exci exciting to see that like you know other people were doing this and we shouted them out and we eventually had a nice conversation with them um, that that ranks up there um, and uh, some of the simpler ones from the older days uh, pasta isla olio I remember that night when I wanted to shoot that episode I needed a carving fork <laughs> You know, because that's how he serves it. And there was only one place in Manhattan that was still open at the time because I got out of work late. I don't know why I was so fixated on making that episode that night, but I was, I was like, I'm doing it tonight. And I needed a carving fork, and the only place that was open was Whisk, which is a very high-end, you know, uh, 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 kitchen supply place in, in um, uh, south of somewhere, Madison Square Park. <laughs> and uh, the only carving fork, th fork they had was $50. And I was so broke. <laughs> I did not have any money. I was very in debt, but I decided to shell out for it anyway because I was so determined to make this episode and do it right. So that, that was a big formative moment for me and for the show. Um, it's very hard to pick one favorite episode. Is there any more questions? Maddie Experience asks, where's the best place to get a garbage place in Rochester? I don't know. The Maddie Experience asks, where's the best place to get a garbage plate in Rochester? I'm not sure because, again, I go, I go home for Thanksgiving and Christmas and I'm not savvy to the dining scene in Rochester. I don't know what cool new um, uh, uh, garbage plate places are there. And our childhood favorite, P-Hots, Penfield Hots, is closed for many years now and is now a fried chicken place. Which it, uni should I get? Poppy Elliott. Which uni pizza oven? Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, I love the, uh, 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 which uni pizza oven should I get? The one that we have out there, is that the Karu 16? Which, which one's out there? The Karu 16? Ka the Ka Karu 16 is my favorite because it's dual fuel. You can use, uh, uh, or tri-fuel. You can use wood chips, wood pellets, or gas. Um, it's got a built-in thermometer temperature readout to tell you exactly what temperature you're getting on the stone there. And it's got a door. Uh, uh, I do prefer having a door on the pizza oven. A lot of pizza ovens, including Uni's, don't have a door, but that one does. It's a great feature. Anything else? Tom Bay asks... Tom Bay. Uh, how much of a deep cut would you go with binging with Abbott? Like a super obscure TV show or a web series? How much of a deep cut would I do with binging with Babish? I've done some deep cuts before. Like, I really wanted to make Chicago-style pizza, so I used an old clip from The Daily Show from, like that I remembered watching in high school, I'm pretty sure. Like, that, that, that was an old clip and uh, from, from a show that had been off the air, at, uh, or I mean, off the air with John Stewart, that is, for, for years, and uh, 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 was just him ranting about how bad Chicago-style pizza is, and I used that as an excuse to make it. So I'll go as deep as you want, as long as I want to make, I'm sorry, I'll, <laughs> I'll cut as deep as you want, no. I'll do as deep a cut as you want, as long as there's a food that I want to eat at the end of it. Is that a satisfying answer? Go deep. Uh, Suki asks, what thing do you like to make that cheers you up? What thing do I like to make that cheers me up? I mean, I'm, I know I answered this before, but the whole roast chicken. Uh, uh, just roasting whole chicken the way it smells and then making stock from it afterwards on a rainy day, on a cold day, usually depressed anyway for that reason. Uh, to, to have all these smells and to know that I'm making something nourishing and useful, it feels really good. It's, very, it's, it, it's a really nice way to spend time. And so that, that's, that's far and away one of my favorite things to do. Both of those recipes uh, and methods are in the book. The book, by the way, is 
Basics with Babish. It is out today. That's why we're doing this live stream. Uh, I just, we're actually at the end of our time here. We've been going for two hours and it doesn't even feel like it. It looks like I have dandruff, but I think that was just salt. I hope. If I have dandruff now with no hair, I'm doing something, I'm doing something wrong. I better go see a doctor. Uh, but uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching over the years, for sticking with us, and for coming and watching the live stream today, for ordering the book if you ordered it, for considering looking at it if you're considering, uh, and for supporting the channel in all the amazing ways that you have and allowing us to experiment and have fun in the ways that we've been able to over the past seven years now, almost eight. Um, the team, what are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> you look like a it's DJ. Okay, it's yeah. okay. all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Especially with the one headphone off, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we just want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. I want to thank you guys, everybody in this room, for everything that you do. I love you guys. And I love all of you watching, and thank you so much. I really hope you enjoy the book. I hope you enjoyed hanging out for our first live stream in so long. And uh, I, if you guys want to, us to do more of these, leave a comment, like it, share it, whatever, and we'll do more live streams in the future because this was a lot of fun. I'd love for us to do this more often. So here's to you. Thank you so much. Have a great Tuesday, and I hope you enjoy the book, Basics with Babish. One more time, plug in. It's on, it's on shelves and in, in delivery boxes right now. Thank you so much. Have a great night, guys. Chris. Woo! Hell yeah. yeah.